Hi, this is Linda Ellers from Great Glass Galore. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your beginner fusing project. So we're going to start off with some uh, basic cutting techniques. So again, I'm going to go over the mosaic cutters. You saw how I cut the rods in the previous video. But you can actually use it to just cut your scrap glass. Again, put on your safety glasses to do this. People like to cut little triangles and then, you know, build them. You can build them into flowers. And put a little dot in the middle there. Oh, I think I lost a piece. Let's do another one. You can make leaves. So you can make lots of little pieces with your, your mosaic cutters. If you want to cut something more exact, let me get this out of the way. You're going to want to use a hand cutter. So uh, I usually start my beginners off on the pistol grip cutter. It's easiest on the hand. There's a carbide head in the front here, so you don't really like to use a, a, a steel wheel cutter from a hardware store because the steel wheels don't score the opaque glasses as well. You also don't want to cut dry, so there is oil in this felt area. Okay, So I'll show you how to hold that cutter. I'll just draw a basic kind of rectangle here. So if you want to just draw a rectangle at home on some scrap glass, you can practice cutting. And you want to hold your cutter straight up. So this part of the cutter you want straight up and down. You don't want it front to back. You don't want it to side to side. I need to tell the glass where to break from one edge to the other. So I'm going to score it from one edge to the other. I'm not going to just score it on the line. And you want to hear this scratchy noise. So you can hold the cutter like this. You can put your finger in front, your thumb in front. I like to put at least my thumb behind the cutter and my fingers on the glass. I have stretchy ligaments so I can do that. But you can hear that noise. Um, this is the little silver head. I'm follow, trying to follow the line to the left of the line. And then I'm going to take what, what's called running pliers with the line up. And I'm going to line that line up with the direction of my score. And I'm going to just push these ends together. Okay. So again, you hear that scratchy noise, cutter straight up and down. Most of the time I want the, the lips on these open just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay. Usually I recommend practicing on the four lines because you'll have trouble following the line. Okay. So there's your piece for the lines. The other breaker you use, these are again running pliers, you can use grosing pliers. So you can use grosing pliers to do thin little strips. So if these running pliers, if the outside edges don't fit on the glass, they don't work as well. But you can screw them together and still cut little breaks. But normally you want them open a little bit. So if you're doing a you can also use the grosing pliers. There's a curved side and a flat side. For straight edges, I use the flat side up. And I'm going to put the grosing pliers on one side and my hand on the other. And the glass goes into an upside down V. You also use the grosing pliers for inside curves. If I do a curve, I use the curved side up. So I'm going to go again. The pliers are on one side of the score and my hand is on the other. So those are the basics to cutting. I also have a, a half hour stained glass, glass cutting technique video that if you want to learn more about detailed cutting, you can do that. So we're going to get move on to our project. <clears throat> okay, so I picked out some colors to use. I, I decided to do it my 8 by 8 inch square slumper. So I already have my base, which is going to be clear. And it's going to go on the bottom. You don't like to put clear on the top because you can see all the bubbles that form between the layers. So I've, I think I'm going to go for about two and a half inches wide of this. And that means five and a half inches wide of the blue. So two and a half of the blackberry cream. So let me start by cutting the blue, bluish turquoise over on the straight edge cutter here. So this is something my husband invented back in the 90s to make teaching really easy because it takes me about five minutes to show people how to do this. I'm just wiping away the glass dust. But so I'm doing an eight by eight. This is going to be five and a half by eight inches is what I need out of this sheet. This is about a 12 by 12 sheet. 
First, I'm going to use the line on the table to see if this, this makes a right angle. So I put one side of the glass flush with the ruler and then find the right angle. So this is a good angle. It's 90 degrees, and I usually have my beginners put a little L there so they remember what's good. And I'm going to come over five and a half inches on the ruler measurement. And then I'm going to score the glass. So here we have another carbide head on this head assembly and it's dipped in oil so this sponge has oil. I'm just going to put that right on top of the glass. I'm not going to push it on because the glass can shift. Now I can do this left-handed or right-handed. Here I can stand left-handed. Here I can come around to the side. And then you want to hear that scratching noise. And I'm going to use my running pliers to break it. Okay, so here's another right angle. So this is the other good side. So now I need 8 inches. So I'm going to rotate the good side over to 8 inches. I can use the running pliers or I can bring this over to the edge and rotate it on the inside and break it that way. So now I need two and a half by eight of this glass. So that looks good, so we'll over two and a half. It's a narrower strip, so hard to break on the edge of the table. So I'll, again, this is my good end, so I'll come over eight in there. Okay, so I've got my main pieces. So. I have this cutter available during class, and we, my husband does still make this large, this is a large version of our cutter, and then we have a smaller version of our cutter. So they are available for sale in 2020. So now come back over. So this, these are my two full layers. Sit down. So I have my clear on the bottom, and then these two are my next on the top. I'm going to clean these. And I'm going to clean these with alcohol. And the reason for this is I'm trying to get off fingerprints. So this black pen actually will burn off, not a big deal. But fingerprints are oily, and those oils can burn into the glass. And then you have little prints all over the place. So I cleaned it. Once I cleaned it, I don't want to touch that side with my fingers. I need to flip it over. See a fingerprint right there. So I'm using 91% alcohol in a cotton ball. You can use, also use 99.9% .9 alcohol. 70 supposedly doesn't work. I haven't tried it. Index supposedly doesn't work. I haven't tried it. Okay. Let's see if it's dry. I'm working on, I've got paper on the table, so I won't get glue on the table. Now I'm going to glue this together. I like to use Elmer's glue. Elmer's burns off non-toxic and it's inexpensive. Some other glues we use will be glass tack. A more liquid, the pink is more liquid and a glass tack gel. Okay, those are made by Bullseye. Those will burn off. The, the Elmer's glue does can burn off as ash uh, in between glass layers. I'll show you that. And then we'll also use some hairspray on the frit. Hairspray usually without any conditioners in it, alcohol based. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue on a piece of, this is just a piece of plastic or transparency. You can use a scrap piece of glass. Okay, and now I'm going to glue these pieces together. And what you want to do is you want to have the glue, I'm using a toothpick so I don't use too much. The glue needs to touch the edge because as the glue burns, and I'm doing about a dot every inch, um, as the glue heats up in the kiln, it turns to a gas. And if you put glue in the middle, what happens is it turns into the glass in the middle, and gets stuck in the middle, and creates a bubble. Then as it cools again, it turns back to a solid. And when it turns back to a solid, it's in the form of a black ash and you end up with a bubble with black ash in it, which is not pretty. So, 
So if it touches the edge, it'll, it'll, as it turns to a gas, it'll go out the side. Okay, and usually this takes about 20 minutes to dry. And you can move it a little once you, you've got it on there because the glue is on the edge, it still is going to burn off. Okay, and when glue is on the surface, it's going to burn off. You don't have to worry about it getting trapped. I kind of recommend designing your project first and then cleaning everything and then gluing in everything together. So after this, I'm going to start putting on some embell third layer embellishments. Oops. So again, I'll line this all up. And something funky is going on right there. I think this green glass has some extra glass sticking out. So I'm going to actually mm, take it off. Yeah, it does. And I'm going to flip it around. Okay. And I could grind that. Excuse me, I'm going to grab a Kleenex. But if you grind your glass at all, the glass grinder water is full of glass particles. And they can set up a film on your project. So if you grind anything, you need to go wash it off. Soap and water, rinse it well. But I'm going to show you what ash looks like. So I purposely glued this pin in the middle, and you can see there's black in the middle. So the glue created a bubble. So the glue created a bubble and turned to a gas, and then as it cooled, it turned back to a solid in the form of ash. Here's another one. This is kind of a huge bubble. Well, this student forgot to take the label off the back of the colored glass. And so as it burned, it created this huge gas bubble. And then as it cooled, it created black ash. Oh, look, it's falling off on my project. Okay, so now let's start using some tools and some glue to, I'm gonna put some squares on. So, and usually the squares are small enough, I don't have to worry about cleaning the fingerprints off. I'm just going to put some glue on the two sides. Okay, if I were real picky, I might say, is that the middle? Yeah, it's pretty close. Hmm. Right, now I'm going to stack, I'll stack a little red square in it. And I can use the toothpick to move it around, or I can use some tweezers to move it around to line it up. And any, this, any of this glue on the surface there is going to burn off. So I'm going to line this up a little better. Maybe I'll add some more red squares down there on the other side. So now I want to kind of make sure that it starts about two inches from the end. I want to move that up over there a little bit. Okay. Maybe I'll put some dots in there. So I'll just dip the dot, stick that down. I don't have to worry about glue gas getting stuck under those because they're so tiny. Now I'm gonna put on some maybe we'll put on some noodles and stringers. So again I'm back to my mosaic cutters. I can cut these noodles with the mosaic cutters. So I go between the wheels. Okay. If you have mosaic cutters and they aren't cutting the noodles and stringers, there's two knobs here that prevent it from getting real close, so I usually take the spring off and I just file those knobs down. Okay, so maybe we want one of those. Maybe we want a red one. I don't want the ends a little 
little straighter. I'll clip the ends a little bit. Maybe I want this one a little shorter. Something like that. Maybe I want to move to a stringer. That's a little shorter. Maybe another stringer that's a little shorter. And then, whoops, hmm. see what happens when I go too fast? Not a big deal. Until I'm not too worried about gas bubbles on those little pieces. Okay, so let's glue these on. And I'm not too worried here on gas bubbles. So we'll just put a bunch of glue on to hold that on. Oops. Fingers. Okay. Try not to get fingerprints on there. And this I can even just put glue over the like that, just put it on the top. And maybe straighten this out a little. <laughs> this happens, you know. Okay, what else have I got here? I've got a little piece of decal, so I'll show you how to use decals. Put some water in a cup, so you want either a pan or a cup, something big enough so this will sit flat in it. You just put that in there for 40, roughly 40 seconds. And, uh, maybe I'll put it above here. And I want to create this suction effect, so I'll put a little bit of water on there. I'm just going to use my fingers. You can use the sponge. Just leave it in there for a while. Okay, so I'll move on to confetti. Okay, so I'm going to use some confetti up on this. I don't know, maybe we'll go up in the corner or something. I don't know. I'm going to break up some pieces of confetti. So I'll use another Tupperware container and I'll just break some of these up with my fingers. Maybe I want them more. And again, these are more opaque. Most of this is opaque, so it doesn't blend with the glue underneath. So the thing with confetti is if glue gets trapped underneath this Elmer's, you can get black spots underneath. Not too much on the glass bubbles because these pieces are so tiny, but glass spots. So what we use is we're going to go for the bullseye glass tack. And I'm just going to put some over here, and it's very liquidy like water. And I'll just throw some of these down. And one more big one up here. And these tweezers to try and separate these or pick them up and put them where I want. Okay, that looks kind of good. Maybe turn it a little. Maybe a little piece in there. Okay, so that's how you put on confetti. Put that press back in the container. Let's see how my decal is doing. Oh, here it finally comes. It's my decal. So you can see the white backing came off. I'm going to lay it as flat as possible. I'm going to try and squeegee out 
any air bubbles or air pockets with my fingernail. Okay, use a spot little sponge. But if there's any air pockets, this will rise up and burn off. Okay, so that's pretty good. You can soak up a little of the excess water. Usually when you use these, you have to wait 24 hours before you fire so that water dries out totally. Because what happens is if it doesn't, again, it, it when water will boil as it heats and it'll create gas bubbles and that will burn off. Okay, Ooh, I can't waste this. So the other thing I've got is paint, um, black paint. Oh, I know, let's go over a frit first. So I've got a frit mix, a medium frit mix. This is a new brand this year called Velcox. You can see it's really sparkly. So they make their own mixes. So I'm going to use, I've got a couple other tools here. I can use a bent spoon. So if you have some old spoons, you can use that to, to feed the frit. You have a set of tweezers with this kind of spoon end. You can use that to move the frit around. And that's what we're going to use this paint eraser for. We're going to move it around. So first, I'm going to paint Elmer's kind of where I want to go with this. So I think I'm going to come off of this swirl up here. Okay, don't worry about Brush. I'll just do it like that. Okay, I'll go this way and I'll take my spoon and get, grab some frit. I'll just kind of tap it down there. Okay. And then I can use this paint eraser to move these loose pieces up into the line if I want to. Move this to more of a point maybe. Okay. So generally when you're stacking the frit like this, some of the frit on top isn't glued at all. The stuff on the bottom is definitely glued. Stuff on, on the top isn't necessarily. So that's where you take your, your hairspray. And again, this isn't a spray, it's the liquid, and I'm just gonna soak it. And again, you can let that dry and it will harden. If you, if you stack your frit really high, you can drop in dots of this. Again, if you just drop in dots on it, it will spread. So you can, I could, Actually, let this be, let it dry, add another layer of frit, and put more of this on top to harden the next layer of frit. I think I'll put some more frit on this swirl, going up this way maybe, just a little bit. Okay. Glue on my hands, we'll use some alcohol to clean that off. Okay. I'm not using any powdered for it right now because I'd have to put an NIOSH mask on and we want an opal powdered for it to show up on this glass. So a non-see-through. And then you'd have to layer it really thick. And what I use to layer, you, you really, the best way to sift on the power is to get one of these kind of sifters. And instead of doing this, which you can see shakes this and sifts the powder on you, you go like this when you sift, okay? So when you do powders, you use that kind of thing. So now I'm back to this, trying to clean up my frit mess here. Get it all into the glue. Add some hairspray on that. Okay. And use the paint. Now here in Colorado, these paints dry up pretty easily. 
Sometimes you have to, they're water-based, so you just have to add more water if you need to. I think I forgot the tips, so let me go grab them. You can use a paintbrush so you can paint like, you can mix, mix the colors and you can paint like your watercoloring, really. So let's see if this is going to come out. Looks like it's coming out. I'm going to grab, you can buy a tip set. I usually like to use the littlest tip and I can put it on the end there. And again, it's a good idea to practice somewhere first. So if I want to just do, oop, let's see, too big of a dot, dash, dot. Dash, so that's about the right thickness. So maybe we want a dot and dash. So I'm doing should go left to right. Oh, it's a dash with a dot. Maybe some dots. Yeah, a longer dash. Dot. Oop, not centered. And swirl. Again, you can clean it off with alcohol and start over. And swirl. And dot. And another swirl. Okay. I think I've used most of the things I've talked about. I haven't, let's see, we got a pebble over here. A oh, pebble, let's see. Any black pebbles? Again, the blue and red pebbles are see-through. So if I put a red pebble on there, it probably would blend with the blue and be a little funny. So let's see if I've got a black. That looks like black. Again, not worry too much on these about they're so heavy, the glue's going to come, as long as the glue touches the edge, and it'll put a dot right up there, a pebble. Okay, I think we're all set, and I think we're ready to fire. So just make sure all your glue and your water is dry before you start to fire. So now you can move on to the next video. We'll talk about glass properties and a fire schedule.